Hi everybody, this is Mr. Matt from the Pike Road Branch of the Montgomery City County Public Library System, and it is storybook time. Now we're in the middle of the month of October, so we're going to continue with our series of not-so-spooky stories. And today's story lets you know may seem a little bit spookier than what we did last time, um, but it's not too spooky. In fact, it ends up being a very sweet story just about someone who really needs a friend who's very lonely. It's one of my favorite new books, newer books, not new books, but it's written by the author of the Pig the Pug books, um, Aaron Blaby. And this book is called The Ghost of Miss Annabelle Spoon. It said it's written by Aaron Blaby and published by Puffin Books. And it's about a ghost who is sort of scaring the people in the town, but um, she's not really trying to scare them. And we're going to find out what she really wants when we get to the end of the story. So here we go. The village of Twee, seven miles from the sea, had a problem more awful than most. It was haunted and cursed. Yes, the folk feared the worst. Oh, the township was plagued by a ghost. No matter what hour, she lurked looking sour, be it midnight or mid-afternoon. Her dresses were shabby, her mood always crabby. Her name was Miss Annabelle Spoon. Oh, the horror, the panic, the townsfolk were manic. They suffered distemper and fits. It was dreadful to see every poor soul in Twee simply petrified right out of their wits. Enough is enough, puffed the mayor in a huff to a crowd who were equally cranky. Things must be improved. Yes, she must be removed. Then he patted his head with a hanky. But how, asked the baker, we'll just have to make her. The schoolteacher said with a scowl. The doctor cried, Oh, we're all doomed, don't you know? And the wind through the trees, it did howl. But just at this juncture, a small voice did puncture, the noise in the room like a spear. It said, I just thought, I just thought that we ought to just ask the poor ghost why it's here. Well, the room, it did stop. You'd have heard a pin drop, and the terrified mob seemed to settle. And they all turned to see, who on earth could that be? Well, it turns out, it was young Herbert Kettle. Are you mad? asked the grocer. But Herbert said, No, sir. I think we should just ask her why. You're insane, spat the mayor, madly patting his hair. If you did that, you'd certainly die. But Herbert said, Rot. Then he turned on the spot, and he marched to the back of the hall. You may think I'm a fool, but I'll talk to this ghoul. Wish me luck and good night to you all. Well, rumor was rife that when not causing strife, the ghost had a house in the wood. So in search of Miss Spoon, only lit by the moon, Herbert set off as fast as he could. Through the dark, crooked trees, just as calm as you please. Herbert searched for the ghost through the night. Till he came to a dwelling where he had no trouble telling all the rumors he'd heard had been right. You can see there's 
Miss Annabelle Spoon's cabin in the woods. And you know it's hers because the family name is on the tree there. It says Spoon. Well, his nerve turned to butter as he peeked past a shutter and saw her there at the table. She was there in the gloom, quite alone in her room, looking spooky and somewhat unstable. Oh, he wanted to run, but his job was not done. You'll regret this, you dimwit, he swore. But although scared to death, Herbert held tight his breath and he opened Miss Annabelle's door. Oh, he shook like a leaf, but to Herbert's relief, what he saw took away all his fears. Yes, to Herbert's surprise, from Miss Annabelle's eyes came the sudden appearance of tears. So if Miss Annabelle is crying, how do you think she's feeling? How do you think she's feeling based on how her face looks and the fact that she has tears? Yeah, I think she's sad. Let's find out why she's sad. I'm so glad you're here, said the ghost drawing near. And I do hope you'll stay for some tea. I can make you some toast. Maybe whip up a roast. Oh, I'm raving. Just listen to me. Would you care for a scone? The ghost she went on. I'd have baked some if only I'd known. Then she fell in a heap and she started to weep. And she said, I'm so tired of being alone. Well, it broke Herbert's heart when the ghost did impart. All I want in the world is a friend. But when I go out, people run, scream, and shout. I'll be lonely, I'm sure, till the end. Oh, she wept and she wept for such sadness she kept deep inside her for such a long time. And with that, Herbert knew what a good lad should do. In the distance, a church bell did chime. The young man said, Miss, I can promise you this. If a friendship is all that you need, well, you don't frighten me. You're as nice as can be. You can call me a friend. Yes, indeed. Poor Annabelle Spoon. Well, she thought she would swoon. Really? she asked through her tears. Yes, said the lad. That's the best news I've had, said the ghost, for the last hundred years. And that's how it ended. The ghost's heart was mended. For friendship was all that she craved. Her sadness diminished. The haunting was finished. The town had been properly saved. So if you're in Twee, seven miles from the sea, and you visit a tea room at noon, don't be unnerved if a table's reserved for the ghost of Miss Annabelle Spoon. And that's the end of the ghost of Miss Annabelle Spoon. Except for one little thing, there's a picture on the back that's really funny. You want to see it? Okay, here it is. Miss Annabelle Spoon got in the bathtub with the mayor when he was taking a bath and it scared him. He's making a very funny face. It's a very funny picture. So what did Miss Annabelle Spoon actually need? Yep, she just needed a friend. And she just didn't know how to ask for one until Herbert came along and made a friend with her.
I hope you enjoyed that story. That was The Ghost of Miss Annabelle Spoon by Aaron Blavey and published by Puffin Books. A friend of mine at a Halloween party dressed up as Miss Annabelle Spoon last year and like made her hair look all wavy and cool like that too because she really liked the story that I read to her the previous year. So we'll be back for one more not-so-spooky story next week. That's one of my favorite stories, Big Pumpkin by Erica Silverman. So be on the lookout for the next Storybook Time video. And I'll see you then. Hope you're having a happy Halloween month. Bye-bye.